2K Emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. Okay. So, you know, to get a new connection, you just say a new connection here and uh, you have to give the connection name, username and the password. Okay. And uh, you, you have to give the SID and XE out here. Okay. If you see the same screen out here. You have to use the same. Yeah, I see the same screen. Mm -hmm. And do you see XE? Did you give XE or uh, it, I, I believe by default you will get it as XE here? Right, I got XE. So still you are not able to connect. Did you see whether your Oracle is up and running? Um, I just installed everything, but I don't know how to check. That. Yeah, you have to check that first because uh, to make sure that everything is up and running. Um, because the it was the, the URL was given. Okay. That I could go to uh, to that link and mm -hmm. then uh, give my username and password. But um, when I click there, my uh, the it says that that's is not safe to go to that website and mm. it didn't proceed further. No. Okay. So I believe you will be seeing. So if you see a link out here, get uh, started with Oracle. Uh, the same link you might be seeing in your machine also. Okay. So once you sign in, I mean just double click on that. You basically get into this page. And click on the application express and uh, just give your uh, username and password. Uh, what's the password? I didn't get that uh, the icon. Uh, you should be having. You just try to find it somewhere from your program files. Okay. So if you see, if I right click and say properties, uh, it is somewhere. Uh, let me just ping you guys this path. That icon should be on the desktop. If you oh, if you would have chosen it to uh, save it in your desktop, then it will get into your desktop. Otherwise, uh, you have to go to your program program files and choose it from there. Okay. So I pinned you the path to everyone, and uh, you just see if you have that URL somewhere so over there. Okay, and just try to install that. I mean, just open that. Once you open that. Uh, Jaram. Uh huh. Uh, the, actually, even I had that kind of problem before, but in the same page, uh, what uh, uh, she's looking at, mm -hmm. um, in the same page where there it gives error that it, it's not safe and all the stuff, but in the below there is a link to, to continue to the web page. Okay, great. Yeah, Saroja, you can just try those things, those tips. Okay. Yeah, I, I tried, I said continue, but still it didn't go to that web page. Probably the username and password is wrong. All right. Yeah, just try giving the proper username and password. Okay. And uh, there's one more thing. I mean, go to the application express tab and uh, you have to choose something like uh, use existing. And if you click on this, there'll be a database known as HR. So just click on that HR. Okay. And give a password and a confirm password. Okay. Here in this case, I've already chosen HR. So there is no point in choosing it right now. And uh, use use an app, uh, like application express username is HR password HR and con confirm password also in HR and just say create workspace. Okay, so that will basically create an uh, existing workspace which is already being given by your Oracle Lexi. So that you can directly come to your SQL developer here and just say right click new connection and connection name anything you can give username as HR password as HR and these things will be as it is. Okay. All right. I mean, you can do one thing. Uh, let's uh, start start up this course. If you still have any problems, we'll see you next. Okay. And Lydia says, "I have MySQL. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine, uh, Lydia. Uh, that's not a problem. Okay. But uh, the thing is, uh, I'll just give you uh, the way uh, the things which I'm going to teach you right now. Um, you have to use MySQL drivers uh, very well. You can get it from the internet. Okay, so I'll just tell you what are the drivers you require. 
in order to work on this particular example. All right, so let's start up. Uh, so in yesterday's session, we spoke about all the uh, theoretical part. Okay, we spoke about a couple of drivers. Okay, and here, as I said, we'll be talking much about your uh, type four drivers. All right. So what are the things we basically need in order to hit the database and uh, do all all the connections and stuff and all? Okay. So there are basically four steps involved. One is first you have to import all the JDBC packages, then register your JDBC driver. Okay, and then uh, you have to uh, get the database URL, and then you have to create connection. All right, and then after that you can hit the database basically. So let us go one by one and see uh, what all things we need to do. All right. So before even getting into any of uh, any of the program, the very first thing is you need to have your vendor specific jar files. Okay. Now if you have installed Oracle, you will be having the jar file somewhere. Um, okay. So I'm just showing it here. So just go to your C Oracle XC app Oracle. Come on, sorry. This somewhere here, D Oracle XC app Oracle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for a jar file O J D B C start dot jar. Okay. So I will basically use this. If you see the path of this Oracle XC app uh, product 11.2.0 server J D B C library. Okay. So open file location. So this is the location which I'm going to ping you guys as well. So for MySQL, you need to have a MySQL related jars. So very well, you can get it from the internet as such, I said. So just go to your uh, Google and just say uh, MySQL uh, jar maven. All right. So you will get the MySQL related jar somewhere here. So you can just click the latest version out of it and you can download it from here. Okay. So for Oracle, you do not have the Oracle jars anywhere. Uh, so for that reason, I had to get it from somewhere else. Okay. So, but for Oracle jars, you will not find it out. Okay. There are some issues with, uh, with this particular repository. You can download it from somewhere from the internet also. Okay. But if you have installed your, uh, your Oracle XC, you don't have to download from anywhere. You already have it in your system. Okay. So I'm going to take this, uh, OJDBC, uh, six. Okay. So I'm just, just going to copy this for now and I'm going to dump it in my libraries folder. Okay. So what next, uh, if I open, okay. So the next step is, uh, put that in the class path, go to the properties and say, add jar, uh, JDBC libraries, this one. Okay. You can even, uh, I could have even chosen by saying add external jar and I would have, uh, selected the jar file where it, it was present right now, but in order to make myself more comfortable, I just copied the libraries in my library folder. Okay. And just say, okay. Uh, next, what next? All right. So already, as you see, we have uh, spoken about, we have got the log 4 gxml and, uh, the same thing we are going to use it in my, in our application. Okay. Now the second thing is, uh, let us go into the programming. The very first and foremost thing in order to work with any of your JDBC programs, you have to import your SQL package. Okay. So there are a lot of uh, different. Uh, packages, uh, sorry, different interfaces and classes we need. So at this point of time, I'm just, if I can just say java.sql.star, but to be more specific in which all uh, classes or interfaces, which I'll be using, I have just imported that. Okay. So the bottom line is you have to import java.sql package. Okay. Now the next thing is, uh, before even, uh, doing this, as I said, you need to have all these jar files. Next is in order to have uh, my logger uh, enabled. So for that reason, I'm importing this one, the log, uh, the log 4j. Okay. And then uh, for each and every class, wherever you are writing, I mean, you are using a log 4j, you have to say logger dot get logger of JDBC program dot class. Okay. This is how the standard it is. You have to say private static logger. Okay. Now, as I said in the previous sessions, the, the very first thing is uh, you need to even get, uh, get your connections. Okay. Before even getting a connection, you have to basically register your drivers. Okay. Because drivers are the one which basically drives the complete, uh, complete flow. Okay. 
So if you see here, the very first and foremost thing, what I'm I going to do is I'm going to load the driver. Now, even when we have spoken about a static block, if you remember, uh, static block is the one which even getting if, even before even your main method getting executed, your static block gets executed first. Okay. I could have put this piece of code in your main method also, but in order to make uh, myself or to give you some extra information on how to use a static block, I have just used the static block out here. Okay. Now in this static block, what did I do is I have basically, okay, let me just uh, disable all these things. So this is not required, which we have already seen in the previous session, all these loggers. Okay. Now if you see the static block, uh, in the static block, the very first and foremost thing, you have to load your driver. Now, where is where this driver is present? This driver is nothing but your Oracle JDBC uh, driver, Oracle driver. Now, where is this driver present? If I just say Control Shift T, this driver is somewhere present in my where in in your OJDBC six dot jar. Okay, for that reason itself, I need this particular uh, jar file. Which jar file? My OJDBC dot jar. For MySQL, you will be having its own specific MySQL jar files. Okay. Uh, even I can just uh, send you this information on uh, when you use MySQL, you're not supposed to use Oracle. Uh, it has its own uh, specific driver. You have to use that particular driver. Okay. Next is you have to get the connection URL. Okay. Uh, now, what is the connection URL? Whenever you talk about your uh, thin drive, you have to say JDBC colon Oracle colon thin at the rate the local host. It depends on in which particular system your Oracle is running. Okay. And this is the port number and this is your system ID. Okay. So this is what I have mentioned here. Uh, that is your JDBC colon Oracle colon thin. This is a standard again. Okay. There is nothing which you can write it by your own. All right. And here the only thing is as I am running my uh, Oracle in my own system. So it is a local host, local host for me. All right. I, I hope you guys know about this. Even though if you do not know about this, when we talk about your uh, advanced Java courses, we will be mostly dealing with your local host because if you are running this, uh, running a server, so when I talk about server, my Oracle server is running in my own system. So it is somewhere running in, in my local system itself. So you say local host. Okay, so it is running in your port 1521 and the SID is your XC. Now if you see uh, the same properties you basically specify out here, go to the properties. And if you see this is your connection HR password, it's going to be HR. And from your SQL developer also, you just say host name as localhost, port number equals to uh, 1521, and system ID is XC. Okay, the same information you need to specify from your Java application also. Okay, so the next thing is uh, first we loaded the driver. So in order to load the driver and make sure that this this has to be in a try and catch block because for sure uh, this is going to this is uh, is going to throw me a class not found exception. Okay, to be more specific. I can say here class not found exception. Okay, so this is basically it throws a class not found exception whenever you see that uh, during runtime it does not find a driver here. Okay, so if for example let me even uh, take out the library from my class path just to make sure to give you a sense of what basically happens. So uh, let me just remove this and just say okay. Okay, now. There are different ways we can load a driver. We can say class dot for name. So this is basically whenever you want to load a particular class, you say class dot for name. This way also you can load a class. So this is your first step, and you can even say driver my driver equals to new. You can even create a class out of it. So when you say uh, Oracle driver driver equals to new Oracle driver, that also you can say it. Okay, your ultimate goal is to load a particular class. Okay. So, and then you can just say driver manager dot register your driver. So you have to register your classes or you have to register your drivers because unless and until you do that, you cannot uh, run your app, you cannot run your application. Okay. Now the second step is you have to acquire the connection. So in order to acquire the connection, you have to say driver manager dot get connection. Okay. So this is again a, a step by step process. So you cannot skip any of the processes out here you have to say driver manager dot get connection. So when you say get connection, it basically returns you a connection object, okay? Connection reference. So if you see this, uh, the return type of this, your driver manager dot get connection is nothing but your connection. Now what is your connection? Okay, this is again an interface out here. We are going to just use this interface and underneath it is going to uh, get the hold of the connection for you, okay? So that means when you say driver manager dot get connection, 
it basically talks it can uh, it is ready to talk to the database okay now here you give the connection url and you have to give the username and password so what are the username and password you have created you have to keep that over here okay so these are all standards okay so you cannot change anything out of it and everything uh, these all things if you see goes into your try and catch block uh, because uh, everything throws some some sort of exceptions out here okay and apart from that i have put everything in a static block because even even before even running my programs the one which i'm going to show you i need all this information i can even put all this information in a main method also okay i can just copy and paste it somewhere here okay all right but i'm not doing it because i just want to show you some variations out here all right so i just put that in a static block also now uh, what next all right so next is we are going to execute some queries and we'll see how to write those queries and what all things we need to do okay so the very first thing is we are just going to, going to get into uh, the select query the very base which we are going to learn here so i have already created a uh, method and in that i have got a select query and i'm just passing a argument as 100 here okay so don't bother about this right now so just get into the uh, select query now this is our input uh, to this uh, method okay now the third step what you have to do the first step we have seen is to load the driver second step is to get the connection okay third step is to create a statement so when you say create a statement that means you basically create a statement with the help of that you are going to execute the query all right so here when you say connection con uh, con dot create statement it basically creates a statement object for you okay and this statement object if you see here this is again a interface for me okay uh, so when i use the statement so what next after i get a statement uh, reference here i just say statement dot execute query all right see all these things are underneath okay so it all depends on what kind of uh, database you use now suppose if you have the same uh, same table in different databases you don't have to change anything out here the only thing is you have to change the drivers here okay you don't have to change any of the logic out here the only thing is you have to change the driver and then you have to change all these details if you when you talk about your mysql you have to change couple of information out here okay um just a moment So let me just open that, uh, open a notepad. I did it. Okay. So these are the uh, couple of information. If you are uh, really interested in to work in your uh, MySQL, then you need your MySQL driver. Okay, so I have uh, as I'm using my Oracle, I'm just using my Oracle drivers out here. Okay, uh, and if you want to use DB2, you have to use your DB2 drivers. For Cybase, you have to use Cybase driver. And for each, as I said, for each and every specific vendors, you have to install the specific jar files in your machine. Okay, I'm just going to ping you this information right away. There is no method, just static block. No, we'll be having methods. Okay, we are having methods, Adil. Okay. Um, okay, so next is, uh, as I said, uh, just go and say select query. Now here, when you say, when you get a statement on that statement, you have to say statement dot execute query. All right. So when you say execute query, you have to give the complete query out here on which particular table you want to query. So already I have this information. So if I just copy this and paste it out here and just say equals to hundred, the same query we are going to execute from our program. Okay, so if you see here at the bottom, you I see the result. Why is this not giving me the answer here? Okay, anyways, it is giving me the answer out here, not in my query result tab. Hmm. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so I, I got one, uh, one entity out here or one row out here. So the same thing we are going to see from my Java application. Now, if you see here, uh, the moment I execute this this query, I get the result out here, right? So the same thing, I need someone to hold this result. For that reason, 
when you execute this query so when you say a uh, statement dot execute query at this point of time basically what happens the query gets hit to the database okay it goes and talks to the database the moment you say statement dot execute query so when you say execute query you get some result from your database okay so you basically store those result in a result set if you remember when we spoke about your collections okay so we used uh, uh, used iterators right so when you say iterator when you say iterator dot has next and next the same thing here from your result set again you have to have the result set out here okay so if you see this this is again an interface for me okay uh, see uh, when you talk about interfaces and stuff and all so there will be some implementation someone is doing it underneath right so it all depends on the driver specific on which what kind of driver you're using and what kind of implementation they have it right you don't have to take care of any of those things as well. Okay, we have already seen that in in our uh, core Java courses. So from the interfaces itself, I used to execute all the methods. So here, if this is an interface, from this interface, I just say execute query. So somewhere I have got some kind of implementation in my Java file, so that gets basically executed. Okay, the same thing out here. You just say uh, stmt dot execute, and if you see everything is uh, everything is been driven using your interfaces itself okay so it is always a bit best practice to i mean uh, drive your complete program using an interface yes i got a question tell me uh Jiram, um, i i missed uh, the previous class yesterday's class okay is this just a repeat or a review of the yesterday's class i'm just asking uh no yesterday's class actually we spoke uh, much about the theoretical part okay and this is the real okay. practical part which we are looking into right now Okay, that's fine. Uh, so the video would be posted, right? It On should be. Uh, as of now, I think it's not there. Uh, that's what I got complained from okay. most of the folks. But that's fine. Whenever it's there, I'll review it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you, but you're not going to miss uh, the actual uh, uh, climax of the of the movie. So just stay tuned. Okay. All right, so next is so you got your result set, right? So here I am basically interested in uh, the result here. So I got the result, the same result which I got it here. Okay, now it's your turn to uh, print those information to the output, right? So I say while rs dot uh, next. Okay, so that's what I say. Whether is there any still any data present in your uh, result set or not? I just say rs dot next. If anything is present in your result set, okay, I just say. I come inside this while loop and just say rs dot get string of one, rs dot get string of first name, rs dot get string of last name. So this is a result set. From the result set, I'm just saying dot get string of one or first name. Now, if you see here, uh, I can even just say copy this employee ID, okay, and just put it somewhere here. Get string of, okay. So if I execute the same program right now, let's see what's going to happen. Uh, right click run as Java application. Okay, the very first and foremost thing, we did a problem, we, we did a mess out here. Uh, the very first thing it says, no suitable driver found. Can we thread the connection so multiple client can use the same connection? Yes, we can hold the connection now then, okay? So we can hold the connection and uh, multiple threads can even use the same connection, all right? But it is not uh, suitable uh, whenever you uh, write uh, in your core Java, it is not uh, advisable to hold the connection all the time. Okay, so we'll talk about thread pooling when we talk about advanced courses. Right. Uh, okay. So here, uh, if you see, there is no suitable driver found because uh, we had removed the OJDBC jar from the class path. Okay. So if I open this up, uh, okay, go to the package and reference jars okay let me just first add it to the class path okay now if when i add that you see um oracle jdbc oracle driver okay so this is what we are interested in right now so let us run the same application again uh, we won't be having any issues because this will be loaded so your class will be loaded here okay so right click run as uh, java application now the moment i run this java application i got the information as 100 steven and king so what is 100 steven and king if you see their actual database query from your sql developer you see employee id first name last name i am only interested in your 
employee ID, first name and the last name. That's what I'm able to query in the application. Okay, so if I take this up, uh, if you see, I just told rs dot get string. If you want to get uh, the other data types also, you can just specify rs dot that particular column name here. Okay, so here if I want to say rs dot email, right? So I just copy this email out here and just say here uh, rs dot get string of email. It doesn't matter whether it is in your lowercase or in your uppercase. Okay. Now if you just run this application again, run as Java application, you get it as S King. Okay. That's the email ID which is present in the database right now. Now if you want to uh, display all the information, just remove this uh, this where clause. I hope you guys know SQL. So, okay. I just say select star from employees. So, right click run as Java application. So, you see all the information out here. Okay. So, starting from all the entities which you see in the database. Uh, can we thread the connection? Okay. The same question. Okay. So, this is the very simple step wherein uh, you open a connection, you create a query, and then you execute the query. Okay. And make sure that once you execute the query, execute the connection, I mean, you execute a query, make sure you close the connection. Now, in order to close the connection, I have added my, added the piece of code in my family block. Okay. There was a question, why do we need to have a family block? This is the reason for me uh, in order to close the connection, because let's say something went wrong out here. If I put that in the catch block, I cannot even close the connection. So finally, I have to close the connection using my family block here. Now, if you see, Close connection, there's an API which I have already written. In this, I'm just passing on the result set uh, statement in the connection. Uh, so, one by one, I'm basically checking if the result set is not null, close the result uh, as dot close. If the statement is not null, close the, uh, close the statement. Okay. So, if the connection is not null, close the connection here. Okay. The same way when uh, we spoke about your input output operation, you basically used to close the uh, connection between your Java application to the file. All right. Okay, so let us go back. So this is your first program wherein we saw how to query the database, right? So there are different variations. You can even have your where clause also. Select query has employee ID argument. Yes, select query has an employee ID argument, but statement has not arguments. Statement uh, had the argument, right? Because we pass this employee ID, the same employee ID we're passing it out here. And that too, it is dynamic. Why it is dynamic? If you go to your select query here, if I want to talk about, uh, let's say employee ID 200. So this is a Jennifer, okay? So I go back to my Java application and just say 200 out here. So this 200 goes to your select query and this goes to my select star from employees where employee ID goes to employee ID. Okay, I just passed this information out here. Now with select star in the last statement. Yeah, I mean, see, as of now, if I run this uh, program, run as Java application, I only see the information about Jennifer, right? Now, as I'm passing this, even though there is an option for me to even uh, not to take care of that particular argument. So I just removed this out here. Okay, nothing much. Okay, so when you want to use this particular argument, which you have already passed, you can use that in your where clause. Did that answer your question, uh, Saroja? Okay. All right. Uh, let us go and see the next. Jeram, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, Jeram, I have a question here. Yeah. When we uh, executed the second query, just uh, select star for em employees. Mm -hmm. That time, is it necessary to pass that argument integer employee ID? No, because you see. Uh, when you talk about your actual, let's say, go to the database here. Now, when you say select star from employees, what happens is it basically gives all the information from the database. Now, you do not, you are not at all interested in. If I take this out here and just select and just say F6, it basically gives the information about all the employees in the database. I'm not interested about all the employees. I'm only interested about a particular employee in the database. So for that reason, I give a where clause. I just say select star from employees where 